Transit TV, welcome back to our Afghan Studios. The drama in the Afghan continues today or continue today. Senegal, one of the favorites for this tournament, for this year's tournament, out of the Nations Cup, as it's, it's called. After losing out, out in penalties against the host Cote d'Ivoire, Cote d'Ivoire who barely made it to the knockout stages. After their last game in the group stage, uh, Cote d'Ivoire players were seen weeping and crying. The fans were all over them. All hope was lost. Everybody thought that they were out of the tournament. But of course, football as we know it is a very interesting sport. Sometimes they say it's cool. With the area of stars, the Senegal parades, they still lost today to, to Cote d'Ivoire, the host nation. Which is for me coming from experience, I believe is good for the tournament because it keeps the fans in the stadium, keeps the atmosphere good and going. Earlier in the day, we saw Kevin win Mauritania 1 0 to qualify for the quarterfinals as well. And uh, with me in the studio today, as we promised in this channel, to bring you all the actions, all the analysis, information, all the, the insights that you need to know for those of you who are not able to watch these games live is with me with me here is my brother Ugum ever reliable Ugum you are welcome to the show damn thank you Reggie it's wonderful to be uh to be alive number one be healthy and then be here on transit tv so uh we we'll look forward to a nice show it's been a feast of football uh, we just finished watching one of the best games ever in the African uh, Cup of Nations. So let's get right into it. Yeah, the first game of the day, Kevin won Mauritania 1-0 in that game. Very energetic game as this tournament has been electric, end-to-end, -end, power, energy, commitment. Everything you can see, talk about African football was present in that game earlier today. Kevin managed to edge that one and uh, run away with uh, a win with one goal. Of course, uh, we had two notable players in Kevin the uh, ranks, uh, in the persons of uh, Bebe, former Man United uh, starlet, and uh, Mendes, their captain, who was very instrumental in Mercura, as so to say, in that game. I don't know, what was your overall take in that game, Ugo? Everybody, uh, Mauritania was good. was good. You know, it's, we've gotten used to uh, a high standard of, of football in the AFCON. Most of the games have been really, really interesting compared to what it's been in the past and compared to what's obtainable elsewhere in the world in or different tournaments. It's been a tournament for the, for the so-called minnows. Uh, and that's what makes it interesting, right? When a team is expected that uh, you come in and walk over them and you see the team playing proper football, it makes for uh, you know a more interesting contest to watch. So the likes of Mauritania, the likes of Equatorial Guinea, the likes of Guinea, uh, the Congo Democratic Republic, even the likes of Zambia that have been eliminated, South Africa, all played good football, right? So uh, yeah, Mauritania against Cape Verde, we kind of expected Cape Verde to walk over them based on that form, but it, it turned out to be a, a closer contest than we expected. Mm -hmm. uh, Cape Verde were lucky to get a win in that game. Yeah, so for the teams that are going to meet uh, the team that's going to meet Cavedi in the next round, what would you think uh, they need to worry about? Well, um, Cavedi is their mobility. You know, they are they are physical, they are very mobile, they are skillful as well. It's a case of uh, being able to match their energy, uh, being able to uh, deny them spaces to play their football. Uh, you know, that's one key element of it. Don't go back and forth with them and allow all that transition uh, football that they play. So that's what I would expect their opponents to do. If you leave it to be an open game, uh, then uh, you're giving them a chance to to eliminate you. Yeah, I think I agree with you on that one. For me, what the biggest uh, <clears throat> tool that they have or asset that they have is the ability to keep the ball. They, they really know how they really keep possession of the game. And I think they at a point they had almost seventy percent of possession in that game, which tells you how technically gifted that team can be. And they play football the way it's supposed to be played with energy, with uh, charisma. They have a lot of uh, skillful players. Of course, a lot of them have uh, Portuguese. Uh, would I say this uh, 
lineage or experience or playing the Portuguese game uh, league of uh, France. So they have the technical ability and they are disciplined to it. They are they are loyal to that pattern of play and they maintain it for 90 minutes. They don't, regardless of what the, what the game brings, they try to play the same way, which for me is a very, very important uh, attribute of that team because they don't lose their heads to conditions in the, in games that they play. And they, they keep to their to their to their style, their part of their philosophy. And uh, it has put them results so far. I mean, being the quarterfinals of uh, AFCON is nowhere, it, may, it can never be seen as a, as a mere feat to achieve. So I think, uh, Kevedi, like we have said in the past, I, I know they are one of the teams that we said could be probably a dark horse in the tournament. And so far, they have proved us right. They have moved the quarterfinals. And uh, I can't remember from my head now who they're going to meet in the next round. And who knows, they could find themselves in the semifinals. Of course, uh, which uh, makes it interesting for the nation and uh, the player that they have as well. For me, uh, the captain Mendes was very, very instrumental to what they did today. Though sometimes they looked a little bit carried a little bit too flamboyant. Eventually, they were able to cover the win and they progressed to the next stage. Good uh, congrats to the nation and congrats to the team and whoever their coach is for what they have achieved uh, today. And uh, we we'll look forward to seeing what they can do in the next rounds. Then the game of the day, Senegal against host uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Yes, uh, in, on paper, it's supposed to be a very evenly contested game, going by the history between these two teams. These two teams have been powerhouses in African football. But this tournament so far, Senegal has had, you know, made names for themselves. Have performed very well, won their first three games in the group stages. So one would have thought that they were going to run away with this one against Côte d'Ivoire, considering how Côte d'Ivoire performed in the group stages. But uh, when you find a way, when somehow you find yourself in the knockout stages, knowing that you did not perform in the group stage, most times all you have left is just to fight and try to take advantage of the situation, which Côte d'Ivoire, I think, did today. They gave it their all. Of course, we know they lost, their coach was fired, and uh, as one of the assistant uh, assistants was uh, appointed in, uh, temporarily to take the team. What a day for him today! His first senior assignment as a coach, he won against a very talented, talented <clears throat> Senegalese team, experienced Senegalese team, defending champions for that matter. And uh, I don't care how this was done, penalties, regular time, but the truth of the day, the, the truth is that Cote d'Ivoire are in the quarterfinals of Afghan 2024. How was your impression in this one, man? Um, <laughs> this is why we watch this game. That's why they call it the beautiful game. You know, football is in just it's an incredible sport. It's it's crazy. I did not for one second expect Ivory Coast to beat Senegal. I'm sorry. I did not expect that at all. Senegal have been untouchable so far in this tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, playing good football, scoring goals. They have youth on their side. They have the players playing at the top level, you know, top class clubs all over, from their goalkeeper to the last player. Mm -hmm. They have the benefit of experience um, of being champions, right? And they have the benefit of having a... It, a squad that has been together for a very long time with leadership intact with less of Koulibaly and uh, Sadio Mani and Mendy, Mendy. Uh, leading the team. You know, options everywhere, on the bench and all that. And they started the right way. They they scored within four minutes of the of the team. And then Ivory Coast remembered who they are. It's, it's, this, is, this is why you say you play 11 men against 11. It's if your 11 men agree that they are inferior to the other 11 men, then so be it. Ivory, Ivory Coast realized that, listen, these guys are our fellow Africans. They've been playing this game like we've been playing it. Let's settle down and play. And Ivory Coast started playing, you know, playing really well, keeping the ball on the floor, moving. And before you know what's going on, it ended up, it ended up being a game dominated by Ivory Coast in terms of position, you know, or, or like what we expected uh, Senegal to, to dominate. And so they ended up getting their reward. What I found, I found outstanding, astounding, as a as a referee, was how that referee gave the Africa's player a yellow card. 
No, for what? Is it for diving? It couldn't have been for diving because clearly the plane was found. You know, so, yeah, well, another thing I want to con uh, comment on this AFCON is we've seen the proper use of VAR. Exactly. Right? Yeah. There's hardly been any VAR decision in this tournament that that's contestable. Right? That's controversial. So we've seen how VAR should be used. Uh, and so, yeah, VAR rightly caught the referee's attention and the referee gave the penalty and uh, ended up being a 1-1 one -one draw. And for when it got to penalties, I was like, is it possible that Ivory Coast will win this penalty shootout and, 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 and show that Senegal, for all the form of the first round, would be elim eliminated at this stage? And, and that's how it happened. This football is a wonderful sport, a spectacle. And, and uh, my heart goes out to the Senegalese team, but I, I'm very extremely happy for the people of Ivory Coast. They've hosted a proper tournament so far. And, uh, you know, this is the least they deserve. To get some joy from hosting the tournament and having their team, you know, advance. Yeah, that, those are my early thoughts from the game. Yes, I, I, everything you say, I agree. Of course, uh, talking about the referee, I didn't. I, I, from just from the first glance, I knew it was a penalty. I don't understand how or how he missed it. Like you said, gave the the player a yellow card and was even ready to restart the game with the corner kick without. Like taking a breath to say, okay, let me see if I got it wrong. But I know sometimes the referees make decision. They know that they have VAR. If I got it wrong, VAR will probably correct it. He didn't show any sign that he he was in doubt of his decision, which was a very which baffled me. I didn't understand how the decision was taken by him. For me, for where I was watching from the screens, I knew it was a penalty. Pepe using his uh, his space right there to. To get that penalty for Ivy Coast, and of course, it was commanded by Casey, which who has a huge experience winning Sc uh, Scudetto and, of course, uh, the La Liga with Barcelona. He has a very, very huge experience, and uh, he used that calmly, commanded that uh, penalty, and of course, which me meant that Cote d'Ivoire pushed this all the way to, to extra time and, of course, won in penalties. Like you said, I'm very, very happy for Cote d'Ivoire. Though I I have a little concern with them, like you said, what went for them in this game was okay. We are not good enough, but we are eleven men, and we can fight. Let's just fight. I, I, and that brings me to a person I wanted to ask. I've had in my mind all the while, all to the group stage and in this game. You know, you can say Fafana is a star in the Cote d'Ivoire team. Is he really a blessing or a cause? Because I see that young man; he doesn't have discipline of position doesn't have discipline of a, a philosophy or a plan he's all over the pitch i know sometimes coaches give some players license to to be have a free role but still you have to somehow pay attention to to the shape of the team for fana is energetic i know but he i think he he runs around too much and believe and believes so much in his power that his brain and the and the technical articles. I don't know what, if you agree with me on that one, but I, I really feel that he, with all the energy and ability that he has, he needs to be a little bit more disciplined with his positioning and uh, play. He, he tends to want to do it all by himself, and which undermines the uh, overall team plans and the uh, ability. I don't know what you think if you agree with me on that one. Yeah, I slightly I, I agree that, that that's, yeah, that's the case, but I... I have a reason for it. The reason being that he's carrying, he's been, he's been um, kind of designated as the man who wants to carry the weight of the nation on his shoulders. That's what he's trying to do. He, you can see, you can drop a parallel to that with Victor Simeon. You know, uh, if not for Victor Simeon's energy, uh, being, being able to, after defending and dropping, still get to the opponent's half and their and their eighteen yard box and still disturb defenders, right? He is carrying a lot, so trying to show that he is the man and that that he would deliver for his country. And so I think he's trying too much. I've seen him play for his club side. He doesn't play that way in his club. You know, he has a defined role and he's, he keeps on that role and makes things happen. So you know, I, I would uh, defend him in that regard. He's just trying again. To carry the weight of the of, of the country and his shoulders, and you know, I, I could see that when he was sub substituted, 
the crowd really appreciated the work that he put in and he gave him a standing yeah yeah, yeah, you, yeah you can say that but i've seen players like yeah uh, you know carried the weight of their teams both in club side and country on their shoulder being a midfielder because losing the shape in the midfield he, he has a lot to say in how a team gets result and i think uh, you can see when he when he left the team you could see that Cote d'Ivoire kind of had a kind of steady approach to their game. They could use their wings better because most of the time I see him running to player spaces. People like Pepe, you know, had enough space to to do their thing. Though, yeah, I, I, Pepe did. I won't say he did necessarily well, but he did enough to to contribute his own to the that the team got. So I think Fofana needs to a little bit be a little bit more disciplined in his positioning because he was just all over the place and sometimes. That uh, chokes other teammates' uh, spaces and affects their output, you know, for what the team is trying to achieve. But yes, like you said, I agree with you. His energy, the way he, the energy that he exerts in games, and the way he tried to carry the team uh, is exemplary. But uh, technically and in terms of discipline, positionally, he needs to, uh, for me, do better in that aspect and allow, you know, have confidence in his teammates and allow them to do their thing and give them options with his positioning. And. Uh, uh, <laughs> We will not finish this one without mentioning your, your man Jackson for Chelsea. Four games, no goal, no assist, nothing. I don't know. He carried his Chelsea form into the Nations Cup. I know he's a young he, player. I don't know what you think. Uh, uh, I, I would like. I would just attribute it to. I think it's um, that Chelsea move was perhaps not the best for him at this stage of his career. He, the guy had just joined Villarreal. Had just started to really. Um, show his presence in Europe, and he got a move to Chelsea. Now, not just get a get a move to Chelsea, he also became Chelsea's uh, main man in, in attack, and that has affected his confidence. You can see, even playing in Africa, I, he didn't seem to me like someone that had the confidence to take defenders on and run into positions and hold up play very well, do link up play very well. You know, watch his body language, watch the likes of Sadio Mane. The difference is like night and day. So. Um, I think he's growing. He's going to grow. He's going to get better um, with time. But this tournament was a bit too early for him to really make a difference, a proper difference. So, yeah, that's um, uh, there's room for improvement for, for, for Jackson. Okay, our viewers, the 34th uh, Afghan edition hosting in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, the big question for me to you, but I don't know what your answer will be to this one. Is Mane a Senegalese legend? 100% yes. 100% yes. Um, he has helped them win the African Nations Cup. It's a very difficult uh, tournament to win, as we can see. You know, um, he's put them on the world map. He served the country really, really well. And with the way he takes care of himself and his body, he may play the next uh, Afcon. I see him playing the next Afcon. Why not? Uh, look at the penalty that was entrusted to him today. He came with supreme confidence and and put it away, you know, emphatically. So yes, uh, him alongside uh, Khalidou Koulibaly, I would term both of them uh, legends for for Senegal and Africa as well. Okay, I agree with you on that one. We now have Nigeria, Gavedi. Oh, more, uh, the, the Congo Republic today, Cote d'Ivoire into the quarterfinals. Tomorrow, we have Mali against Burkina Faso, Morocco, South Africa. Ubum, one of our favorites to win the tournament is out today, Cote d'Ivoire. Let's see, let's see. Can you tell our viewers who, or do you want to wait to the end of the, uh, the second round matches to give us your, your favorite three teams to go all the way to the finals? Yes, yes. Let's just wait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's just wait and see. <laughs> yeah, I have a few ideas forming in my mind. I don't. I don't want to jinx it uh, because one of them is my team. <laughs> but yeah, let, let's wait till they finish um, the remaining two games and then we can make that call. Okay, our viewers, like we promised you, stay locked in this channel. We will daily bring you highlights analysis from. Uh, from the Afghan going on, it's been an interesting competition. If you have not watched any of our contests, please go and watch all of them. We all of them have the highlight, the major highlights to the games and in depth analysis. If you finish watching all our, all our series in this competition so far, you will have been like who, who uh, any of our viewers that has watched the games live. So please. 
please try and check our channel and watch the the the, the previous editions of our Afghan uh, coverage and get yourself abreast with happenings in the Afghan. And I will tell you, if you have not up to this moment, you have missed loads of football, loads of beautiful football, electric, energetic, and committed football from African play players all around the globe. They all came home this time, January 2024, to do their nations proud. And I must say, there are very handful of them who you will say they're not, com they're not committed in this uh, tournament so far. And we are proud for all the African uh, players who have participated in this team, in this competition, sorry, so to say. And we expect to see you again tomorrow after South Africa, Mali, and whoever qualifies tomorrow to the quarterfinals. Thank you for staying with us, Ugum. Thanks for coming around. You're always reliable, and uh, our viewers appreciate you. I appreciate you too, my brother. And see you tomorrow. All Ciao. Right,